YOLO baby, you only live once. I came across this idea or this concept on LinkedIn. They said YOLO is fueling risky career moves. Basically they're saying with the pandemic that's pushed people to start a side hustle or start their own business. And those that are still working are threatening to quit unless employers allow flexibility to continue. Some of the larger companies like Facebook and uh, LinkedIn, and I think maybe Twitter, have gone on record saying is if you want to work remote from here on out, that's fine with us. And so I've also heard some other companies being like, you know what, you're coming back five days a week, we're going back to how it was. So I think um, we're going to see especially the new generation with uh, with different priorities, uh, more willing to take risks. And I think that's pro possibly going to be for the best. Well, what do you think? Are you going to get a new job? I would like to start with this. I'm the man, y'all don't get it, do you? Type of money, everybody acting like they knew you. That's Drake, that's YOLO, by the way, just in case for the kids who didn't get Um, I was reading this article in the Times and I kept, it was like so skeptical of young people going living out their best life, like going and traveling and investing money in cryptocurrency. And I was like, when are, when are you supposed to like live out your dreams if it's not your 30s? Why not do that? Well, I think it's because I didn't do it that way. So you can't do it that way either. I mean, it used to be you worked for 40 years, you got a gold watch and you died three weeks after you retired because that's just what you did. And I think maybe the boomer generation is a little bit different. I think the average person has five career changes or something like that. And now it's like, if especially in tech, if you don't change every, if you don't change jobs every 18 months, that's uh, like you're stagnant. So I don't know. I think uh, this is a paradigm shift. I've said it so many times that before this, everyone's like working from home is not possible. And when you're forced to do it, you're like, well, you have to look at it a different light and just saying, let's go back to 100% what we were. I don't think is going to be what's best for everyone involved. I'm just saying you read the tea leaves. You're 28 years old. You've made a boatload of money. You've been stuck at home for a year. You've got nothing tying you down. Why would you not quit everything and go travel the earth for a year? I mean, even boatload is a subjective number. I mean, even if you take the amount of money you made out of the equation, even if you even if you don't have that much money, you can figure out a way to travel. Like you don't need to be a billionaire or you don't even need to be a multimillionaire to be able to do it. You could just, there's ways to make it happen. Like just people have been forced to look at their lives and say, well, what's, What's important to me is going to an office 40 hours a week just to get FaceTime important, or should, can I make a little bit less money and do something that I want to do? Which I think, once again, reading this article at times, I feel like they're skeptical of these 28 year olds taking a look at their life after a year and doing some introspection and then being like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to do something different. And I was like, good for you if out of the last year you did some introspection. I mean, it's not only 28 year olds, you're in your 40s, I'm in my 30s, we, uh, we're doing this. It's not like, well, the pandemic's over or this. I mean, I don't know if you would call this a side hustle, but it's uh, work on the side that we kind of own the content of and we're not doing it for someone else. Are you going to quit and go back to your full time normal? Well, and that's the other thing you read these articles about YOLO and life and side hustle. It's always like all or nothing. Is it there like an in between? Can't you do like a side hustle and maybe keep your job or get, why does it have to be like, I quit everything and I only did this or I made well, all this and I tried, can't there be like a middle ground? Sometimes there can't, some jobs won't let you. I mean, I think there should be a middle job, middle ground, but like, I remember the last company I worked for, they had something technically in their employee handbook that said no moonlighting without approval. And uh, it was right when Uber started and I was like, I'm going to drive Uber. And I, I did it at night. And uh, they're like, you can't do that. And I was like, fire me. Well, you know, and that's one of the things in this article, they say they, that like companies like Twitter and Facebook, the big companies are trying to keep these young people and not having them quit and leave, go forever. So even if you don't work one of those companies, can't you go to your boss and be like, hey man, I'm sort of unhappy. We got to work something out so that I can only work part-time and get another job. But I feel like if you went to your boss and told him this situation, there might be a way to work that out. Yeah, and I think there's also something with the younger generation in general has less responsibility. You used to get married when you're 18, 19, 20. You start having kids when you're 21. 
you don't have the luxury of going to your boss and say, I want to do something different because if you go and have that conversation, there is a chance you're going to be like, no, you got to go. And so I think the, the millennials, I don't even know if there's a name for the next generation, the people that are in high school now, there's got to be, but it's, they're more willing to take a risk. I'm more willing to take a risk because I don't have kids and I'm, I'm willing to do that because if I had kids, I'd probably be less uh, risk available is that a word i am i am very pro yolo i read this article and i thought everybody was skeptical i'm very pro yolo except for i read an interesting article in vanity fair about tony shea the founder of zappos who basically got everything in his life that he wanted he started zappos became a billionaire because amazon bought them he traveled he ran las vegas there was all sorts of things and you know what he ended up dying in his house because he lit it on fire it's like it going on a trip around the world, starting your own company, making ultimate amounts of money, all of that stuff ultimately will not make you happy. It won't cure your heart of all that you want in life. If you're doing it for experiences, but don't think that, you know what, you're going to come back and be a completely centered person. Yeah. I mean, to be clear, there's not a straight line into making a lot of money and killing yourself. Richard Branson made a boatload of money and now he goes windsurfing with presidents when they retire. So there's ways to do it, but also YOLO, uh, <laughs> I feel so weird saying that yeah. it's a, it's a concept. And for me, it's like the most successful people are the ones that took a chance. Richard Branson dropped out of high school and continued with a side hustle. He did turn that into an empire. Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, so many tech people dropped out of college doing a side hustle and now they've hit it. But you have to also say that uh, sometimes it doesn't work out. I think probably more times than not, it doesn't. So that's something to consider as well. And working out, what does that even mean to right? That this article goes on to say, like, is Elon Musk a happy person? No, he takes drugs to go to bed at night. Is Jack Dorsey? He starves himself on a diet. Mark Zuckerberg has half the people on Facebook. He wakes up going like, how do we get half the rest of the world on Facebook? They're not necessarily fulfilled people. They're just successful at their job. So what is success for you? Like, do you need to go travel around the world, get that out of your system so you come back and have a family? Like, what is it that, I mean, that's the whole point of the late 20s to figure out who you are. Yeah, and uh, I already did travel around the world and I came back and I was still confused. But <laughs> I mean, there's people who are in uh, working three jobs at CVS that take an Ambien to go to sleep. So, I mean, again, there's there's no direct correlation, I think just because you have money, you're not going to be happy. And just because you don't have money, you're not going to be happy. There's a study and the numbers probably changed some, but in the U S they found that I think if you make over $70,000 a year, you don't get an increase in your overall happiness. There's like a number where if you're in poverty, like it's hard and things suck, but like once you start making more and more and more and more, there's not a direct, there's diminishing returns on what you can do. I think the one thing this article was missing was just the idea of having community in your life, people that you can go to and say like, hey, I'm miserable. What should I do? People that will tell you the hard truth. And I think that's ultimately what I found. Like after doing the thing in the 20s and the 30s, like just having people that are really real in your life, that is what matters. Not the traveling, not the money. It's like true friendships and family relationships. Nice. Well, if you're ready for a hard conversation, please reach out. Larry will respond. You can find him at Reposted Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. I'm Andrew Keller for the Uncomfortable Conversation. Dan, thanks for stopping by.